Welcome back to Therani, I'm Joe B. In this video, I'll show you how to walk with just a crutch if you're given partial weight-bearing orders by your doctor. Let's dive in. Partial weight-bearing orders are normally given to patients by their doctors in order to protect the surgery site, allow healing, and reduce pain. There are three types of partial weight-bearing. A partial weight bearing where the whole foot can touch the ground, mainly stemming from a recent hip, thigh, knee, or leg fracture repair. There is also a heel touch weight bearing where only the heel can touch the ground, normally after a forefoot surgery like a transmetatarsal amputation. Finally, there is also a toe touch weight bearing where only the forefoot or toes can touch the ground, normally after a hind foot or subtalar surgery like a calcaneal osteotomy. To determine if you are doing partial weight bearing correctly, you can use a weighing scale and place your surgical or unsound foot on that, trying to move the needle up to 50% of the patient's body weight. Perform this activity numerous times so the body can get used to the correct amount of weight bearing foot pressure. If the patient is provided a surgical shoe or weight bearing boot by the doctor, please make sure to use that prior to placing the foot on that weighing scale. If the patient has good lower extremity coordination, confidence and balance at the acute one to three days and subacute four to 21 days of healing, the patient may not need to use a rolling walker and can go ahead and progress to a unilateral axillary crutch as permitted by the doctor or the physical therapist. To add just the axillary crutches, the patient can do that in the sitting position prior to standing by looking at the height adjustment button and moving that according to the patient's height. This button is located above the rubber tips. If there are no height markers, then the crutches can be adjusted in standing such that the rubber tips should be placed at the level of the midfoot on the good or sound leg. The handlebar needs to be at the level of the greater trochanter of the femur. If it is hard to locate, the patient can straighten both elbows in such a way that the handlebar is at the level of the wrist. This can be attained by turning the crutches upside down and adjusting it moving away from the handlebars to lengthen the crutches and close to the handlebars to shorten. To walk with partial weight bearing where the whole foot can be down on the ground, the patient advances the crutch held on the sound or good side first, then the surgical or unsound leg, then the good or sound leg. Turning to the right or left should be done at a 45 degree increments with the crutch moving first, then the unsound or surgical leg, then the good or sound leg. Walking backwards can be attained by advancing the crutch backward first, then the good leg, and then the unsound or surgical leg. To walk with partial weight bearing where only the heel of the foot can be down on the ground, the patient advances the crutch first, then the heel of the surgical or unsound leg, then the good or sound leg. Turning to the right or left should be done at a 45 degree increments, and walking backwards can be attained by advancing the crutch first, then the good leg, then the heel of the unsound or surgical leg. To walk with partial weight bearing where only the toes of the foot can be down on the ground. The patient advances the crutch first, then the toes or forefoot of the surgical or unsound leg, then the good or sound leg. Turning to the right or left should be done at a 45 degree increments, and walking backwards can be attained by advancing the crutch backward first, then the good leg, and then the forefoot or toes of the unsound or surgical leg. After each step, the feet should always end up with the toes in line with each other, this gait pattern is called a three-point step to gait because it has three steps. If you like this video, please like, share, and comment. And for more therapy animations, please subscribe to Therani.